Shout out to uh, Sun Kiss Queen who asked me how I come up with topics. Well, you know what, sis? To be honest with you, a lot of this information is channel. Um, a lady had asked me that like uh, about a year ago on my main channel. She asked me um, where I'm getting my information from. And I told her, you know, if I'm most of the time I'm channeling information and like from guides, from gods, from angels, from archangels, from the most high, all of that from other regions of the earth from other dimensions but if i'm reading something i'll tell you i'm actually reading something but a lot of times uh a name will come up like for example last year this time i was channeling jefferson davis jefferson davis's birthday is on june 6th so around may this year last year this time i was channeling jefferson davis and then around february or march i was channeling william tecumseh sherman okay william tecumseh sherman confederacy oh i mean uh union and then jefferson davis was confederacy civil war okay civil war brass and shit so their names come up then you know messages will come along with them where i have to take the lead and go into the research now as far as the putin lukashenko alexander the great prophet muhammad energies that's channel information and i didn't realize that uh president bashar al-assad excuse me bashar al-assad bashar Bashir al-Assad, goodness gracious, Bashar Bashir al-Assad, okay, <laughs> he got re-elected, he was the incumbent president of Syria, he got re-elected over the last couple of days, and they're celebrating that shit right now, so that's how it got channeled, I didn't realize he got re-elected until after I uploaded a damn near two hour uh, content that I just did on Lukashenko and them, yes baby, they celebrating over there in Homs and Damascus and Tartar, and uh and i just talked about damascus a couple weeks ago y'all heard me say damascus syria is coming up now as far as the al aqsa mosque and the third temple that's stuff that were coming up in my spirit my guys will tell me what leads to take if i'm reading something they'll tell me go into that look at this look at that i'll be writing in a notebook i do automatic writing okay not all the time i don't intentionally do it unless i have to do it but what it is is i'll be t i'll i'll go into something and like today like yes, last night I knew I had to do a channeling today on the end times. They told me do a channeling on the end times. You're going to do this here. So I got up at around 1130 and I wrote down channeling in, in, on end times, prophecies of Muhammad, Bible plus Quran or Quran and Nostradamus, R Russia in 2022, Lukashenko, Jerusalem, Saudi, Lebanon, Jordan, Qatar, Morocco, Armenia, Iran, China, Germany astrological movements as connected to prophecy in the world georgia guidestones al masi al, al dajad also al avar also known as al makdi the antichrist shadow and bone decode discussion coming up soon prophecies of nostradamus is going to be separate because you know nostradamus is the g he wanted the g's prophet muhammad need his own episode too but you know i just included him with this because that's how they told me to do it but nostradamus is quatrains i'm gonna have to address that another time not too long from now, but I'm just saying that'd be a separate episode. I thought I was going to put it together. But then when I got into how deep this information was taking me and how many leads they take me on, I realized I can't put it all together because it ended up being four hours. Now, y'all know I can do a live stream like that, but I ain't trying to do that. My energy, mm -mm, and nah, nah, not with all the battling I've been doing. I ain't trying to do that right now. So right now we're going to get into the astral movement. So that's how topics come to me. Sometimes I just think of them, but it's never just me. They channel this information. So like I was talking about Lucifugus Rofacal or Lucifugus Rofacal, and I put demonic spoliation of divine evidence. That's how they told me to word that. So another one, another episode was about, you know, the, min the minions of Lucifugus Rofacal, solar parasites. That's how they tell me how to word shit. You know, sometimes it's me, sometimes it's not. But a lot of this stuff, when it take me all over the damn world to all these different topics and channel songs and channel names. And like last night when I was talking about uh, Prophet Muhammad, uh, Al-Aqsa came up and I'm, I'm, I'm like Al-Aqsa and I'm like Hezbollah. Oh yeah, the Al-Aqsa mosque on the temple mount because Prophet Muhammad's hadiths or prophecies are tied to the third temple just like the Bible, the book of Revelations, the book of Daniel, book of Ezekiel. They all talk about the third temple. So all of that's tied together. They just tell me what leads to take, you know, like it's, I'm, I'm, I'm a spiritual detective, baby. 
and it be tiring as a motherfucker but when i get in this notebook and i start writing they tell me what to what to go into so we about to get a crack of lacking on these astral movements because i know a lot of y'all been on a spiritual attack now i'm not telling you that all your problems about to go away i'm not telling you that it's just gonna be like you've been washed clean white as snow like merry little lamb and you're not gonna have no more spots and you're not gonna have no more tangles in your fur and everything gonna be good i'm not telling you that what i'm telling you is they're sending me to do this astro movements um channeling slash information for you so that you know what's coming so that you know how to move accordingly because i i can't do the cosmic influences readings this is what they're telling me to do in lieu of that okay i was going to be doing until things went a certain way i was i was thinking you know they don't tell me everything they they let me go down start going down a path and then they say stop right here in the middle of the path and i got to turn around and go in another direction and it's like i gotta abandon what i was about to do so I was thinking I was going to do the cosmic influences readings for all the signs and give each sign the, the transits, right? They stopped that shit due to ongoing spiritual skirmishes and shit and, and, and motherfuckers fucking with me. And then they said, stop the readings because at first I was going to do the transits inside the reading. So like Sagittarius, I was, you know, I already did Sag, but I was going to do like Gemini, your reading, and then shadow elements and then astral transits for each sign they stopped that shit and was like stop that don't do that now they were and i was going to do every sign in addition to a separate astro upload talking about additional elements but they were like stop that just do the astral upload don't do the readings right now and that's for readings reasons that they're not revealing to me but i know it is tied to the spiritual skirmishes that have been going on behind the scenes that I've been involved in, they didn't want me reading right now. Probably also to protect my energy because when I open that portal up, a lot of shit be coming through. Plus, I had motherfuckers coming in my house and bothering me and bothering my energy field. So they just stopped me from reading altogether. And those of you that are readers, you know, prophets, psychics, etc., mediums, you know, when somebody's fucking with your energy, it's hard for you to read. Or they can fuck with your energy even better if you're opening yourself up to readings. So some people will just stop reading until they get over a spiritual attack, battle, etc. Some people put them on pause. So that's why I put mine on pause. But we're going to get into this. Now, those of you that have got spiritual work that you're doing. The Lords of Karma are about to assist you. Okay? The Lords of Karma are about to assist you. Now, it's not saying that they weren't assisting you before, but they about to ride on motherfuckers, okay? And I'm about to tell you about that. So, let's get it. All right. Just one moment. Let me get my page up. And, uh, well, it's already up, but I want to start here. Now, today is May 30th, 2021. It's 1.55 p.m. Peak of time, 1-1. One, 1.55 one. 1 p.m. on 5.30, which is an 8. You know 8 is about karma, right? That's Saturn. So, it's not a coincidence that they have me do these on certain days. It's 66 degrees Fahrenheit. 66 degrees Fahrenheit. That's devil energy. Now, what did I say the other day? Let's go back to my video, because I'm about to tie it together. Uh, on my video called Solar Parasites, a video slash podcast episode, Solar Parasites, Minions of Lucifugus Rofacal, because he goes by Lucifugus and Lucifuge. Lucifuge, they told me to put Lucifugus Rofacal in that. Soon he'll show them their new home. Hashtag prophecy, hashtag prana parasites, hashtag solar vampires, hashtag energy, energy vampires. And so in the box, if you go back to this video, which was dated, let me see what the date is on this. Uh, dated May 27, so three days ago, 2021. If you go in the box, you'll see what I typed. I put Lucifugus Rofacal is in charge of hell's government under Lucifer. He is Lord of Excess. Remember I just talked about the Lord of Karma, right? Okay. He is Lord of Excess, never having had enough. Just like these POS or pieces of shit do not know when they have had enough. He will show them just how it feels via hellish ordinances laid upon them. They'll know all too well what it's like to be overflowing with unrelenting pain, illness, 
curses, revenge upon them from others, self-hatred, bitterness, constant warmongering, or fighting even when they don't want to fight no more. Anger, destruction, calamity, remorse, and being run ragged from unbridled ambition. They are crawling the floors of Sheol and will soon come, come to realize it. Before the next full moon, this is the prophecy they gave me. They told me as I was recording this, and after I recorded it, they said before the next full moon, which the next full moon is June 24th, 2021, at 2.40 p.m. That's, that's six, 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 six month, six day, as in uh, 24 equals six, and 2.40 is six. Six, six, six numerology, they will know real pain, so mote it be. So saith the Most High Supreme, I say, I say, I say, the devil card is number 15. That's a 66 double devil energy for this prophecy against evildoers and liars. 666 energy on the month, the day, and the time of the next full moon, and it is so. So, these people, I say, you wanted to align with the Baphomet slash devil, so we shall see and watch this 66 energy, 666 energy, and 66 energy, because it's 66 degrees outside right now return swiftly upon you it is now 1 58 p.m that's a nine that's aka a six 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 is nine 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 completion 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 endings the lords of karma three lords of karma are coming some of them are already here let me tell you the next full moon is a quote unquote honeymoon however it's not going to be anything sweet for these people regardless of them wanting to appear as so-called oshun which is a honey goddess or orisha or not they're going down just watch it so let's get into this astrology so that was what I, that was my prophecy on the 27th. Today's the 30th. Now, let's look at this here. Uh, I want to go, I want to, because I was about to start at June 5th. So I want to, I want to go back a little bit further since today's the 31st. And let me start with May 31st. Okay. Uh, let me start with May 31st and go from there. So, May 31st, Monday at 1.15 a.m., this is Eastern Standard Time, so you'll have to look uh, for your region if you want to. May 31st, Mar Mars is going to try Neptune. Okay? By the way, if you hear any noise in the background, uh, some people are supposed to be laying some flooring or whatever, so I haven't been out there in a couple hours to see, you know, they were vacuuming, but... I haven't been out there in a couple hours to see because I've been back here in my room doing work. But um, that's what, if you hear any noise or banging, it's some uh, new flooring being put in the kitchen. And even though that's on the other side of the house, you know, this is, you know, it still could echo. But um, it says, so, all right, May 31st at 1.15, Mars is trying to Neptune. May 31st uh, at 8.11 p.m., peep the time, 8.11, 8.11, 8.11. Sun is going to conjunct with the Gemini North Node, okay? Sun is conjuncting with North Node, May 31st, Monday, okay? I also received a prophecy that by Monday, June, between 5.31 Monday and June 1st Tuesday, some shit was going to end. It's now 2 p.m., okay? Meaning a lot of these attacks was going to stop. People was going to disappear. Suddenly, they was just going to stop fucking with you. Well, fucking with me, but, you know, if it applies to other people, then great. Sun sextile Chiron, June 2nd. So on 6-2, the sun will sextile with Chiron. Chiron is a malefic, if I'm not mistaken. Y'all, I'm a, a student of astrology. I'm not a master. Okay, so Chiron is a... Chiron, okay, so Chiron is actually benefic. He's the wounded healer. But Ceres is seriously malefic, and we're going to get to Ceres in a little bit, okay? We're going to get to Ceres, because y'all about to get a lot of fucking spiritual help, okay? And it don't matter what they do magic-wise, if you're on the right side of karma, the lords of karma ain't going to fuck you up, okay? 14, 14 on the clock when I said that, 55, baby, 10. The lords of karma ain't going to fuck you up, meaning Jupiter ain't going to fuck you up if you're on the right side of karma, baby. So, sudden sex styling with Chiron, the wounded healer, June 2nd at 722. 722, 74, that's 11. You got to peep these times. When you look up these astrological transits, make sure you look at the time. When you look at the, um, the, uh, sun the uh, 
the movements of the the phases of the moon. Also, peep the time when it rises and when it sets, and do that numerology. It's two o two. That's a four. Okay, Venus is going to enter Cancer on June six, which is a eight at nine eighteen. That's a ninety nine or a sixty six. Okay, because all those times uh, are interesting too. Okay. June 3rd at 3.05 p.m. The sun is going to trine with Saturn. June 3rd at 7.32 p.m. Venus is trining with Jupiter. Mars is going to square Neptune on June 5th at 3.03. Peep the time, baby. 6.5, which is 11. 11.55. 11.55. 6.00. Five and a five year so 655 but 1155 at 303 which is a six also a 33 it's gonna mercury's gonna square neptune what does this mean for you now you have to look it up if you want um but i'm gonna tell you a little bit about the significant ones they're pointing out to me um all right Okay. Firstly, let me do this. Let me let me before I even go into Mercury square and Neptune, let me address Mercury retrograde, okay? Because a lot of people are uh talking about Mercury retrograde right now. It's very significant because it's in Gemini. It says Mercury second retrograde of 2021 in the air signs or Gemini reminds us that we are not done with issues of misinformation and distraction. Misinformation is also known as motherfucking lies and half lies and half truths and lies of omission and lies of commission. That's motherfucking misinformation, a.k.a. disinformation, a.k.a. distraction. That's why they told me to stop my reading. Stop your readings till we tell you distraction. Okay. We are all well advised during this time to pause and listen to the noise in our own minds before we jump into any fray or mess. The most intense period is going to be around the station that Mercury stationing retrograde, which is May 22nd when Mercury squared Neptune for the first time. And I mentioned this in some of them cosmic influences readings, which is actually close to the station on the 29th. So just yesterday when Mar Mercury was conjunct Venus, Yesterday, May 29, 2021, which will square Neptune as well. So Mercury is squaring Neptune on June 5th. And this will add to the theme of the confusion and the illusion and the lies and the games because Neptune like to trick people. Neptune is that Pisces shit be holding, pulling wool over people's eyes, pretending, mask wearing shit. The Janus face, remember Gemini, the duplicitous one, the demiurge. Laugh now, cry later shit. So it says... So Mercury square Neptune on June 5th is going to add to this confusion with Mercury retrograde in Gemini, okay? And Mercury square Neptune that happened on May 22nd, okay? Mercury is also conjuncting with Venus, so there could be some confusion around love matters and communication there. I'm adding this here. That's not written. It says, the sun will conjunct Mercury, which is in the middle of the retrograde period on June 10th. Let me tell you what else is on June 10th, baby. On June 10th, there's going to be Sun conjunct Mercury and Gemini and solar eclipse in Gemini and new moon in Gemini all on June 10th. Hear me again. June 10th, 2021. Solar eclipse in Gemini. The only solar eclipse for the next three years. Sun conjunct Mercury in Gemini and the new moon in Gemini will be at 1.34 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 8 which is Saturnian energy, all on June 10th. So that's why some of y'all was told to take a break till June 10th, okay? Some shit gonna be clapped up out of the way, baby. So, again, the sun will conjunct Mercury, which is in the right smack dab in the middle of the retrograde period during a solar eclipse, the only one of the next three years, on June 10th, and it will square Neptune on the 13th. You know 13 is rebellion, baby. But that's also 6 and what? 6 and 13? That is 6 and 4. That's 10. Completion. Some shit gonna be knocked out of the fucking part. I don't know what you're dealing with, but some gonna close out between June 10th and June 13th. Some of you, it might be earlier. Some of you, it might be right after that because there's gonna be some real heavy energy right 
right after that. So by the time Mercury goes direct on the 22nd of May, the Sun and Venus will be gone from Gemini and it will be entering Cancer, okay? But it will square up with Neptune or, you know, one more time on the 6th of July. Seven and six is what? 13, more rebellion energy. Put all this together and it seems that between May 22nd and July 6th, we will feel this influence that will rem that will warn us to remain still in the fast moving rapids of information gossip news carrying bone carrying and all kind of distractions and you know which ones might be your favorite so which ones might bother you the most think of this as an extended sit in a meditation retreat didn't i tell you i was told i had to retreat i told i had to rest and take a break my readings have confirmed it here we go. The desire to scratch an itch is but a little thing, yet it disturbs the flow of breath and being that stillness offers. Maybe it's like being at the ocean at the moment when a big wave is about to break and you can't get away from it. The best strategy is to dive deep and let it break over you when you can't even feel it. As you know, you will come up for air once it's finished. Let this shit break, baby. I told you some shit going to be clapped up out of the way. Now, I, I didn't read this previously. They just tell me what to look at. This is uh, called Align for Mercury Retrograde, and it's by Julie Simmons, dated May 8, 2021. This is somebody's website, okay? Now, I want to go back. Um, it says Mercury squaring Neptune on June 5th can complicate discussions and business dealings because of misinformation and confusion. Stay away from conspiracy theories, cults. Let's see. Uh... Stay away from conspiracy theories, cults. Um, even giving or receiving instructions can cause can even cause people to suffer from a lack of clarity, or they could get it mixed up and misinterpreted. Uh, if you must deal with any important business, government, or legal matters, you need to seek professional advice or help from a trusted friend. This is from Astrology King. Uh, dot com slash Mercury dash square dash Neptune. Okay, it says when dealing with family and friends, try to stick to the basics of communication. You know, your imagination and your potential for deception might lead you to some sticky uh, situations. So in other words, I'm telling you here, that's not written here. Don't let your mind wander and don't jump to conclusions because this Mercury squaring up Neptune can cause you in your mind to jump to conclusions and dream and, and cook shit up. You know what I'm saying? Cook shit up and then you want to argue like we say down in the South. Not argue, argue. Shout out to Plies. <laughs> Plies is one of my favorite two favorites too, sis. Uh, you want to argue with people over some shit that you done cooked up in your mind. You know what I'm saying? Don't do that. <laughs> Avoid that. This would only increase the level of confusion and insecurity that this transit brings. You really must avoid treachery and scandals. Even little white lies that could lead to a major embarrassment or the need for more convoluted cover-ups. So see, people that were lying, baby. Mm. It says you are more susceptible to believe in conspiracy theories or strange and extreme spiritual and religious views at this time you need to protect yourself against loan sharks and pushy salespeople. psychic vampires may find holes in your aura so stick to more suitable activities for this transit like music dance poetry or creative writing drugs and alcohol right now are a big no-no because you're gonna trip if you get on that during this transit you're gonna trip to trip 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 okay now, Mercury will square Neptune again after June 5th. It'll square Neptune again on July 6th. And then it'll square Neptune again uh, on December 7th. So ju between June 5th and, and July 6th, Mercury's going to square Neptune twice. That's very, very unusual because usually there's quite a few months in between there. So actually, let me take that back. Mercury is going to square Neptune three times. This is why so many illusions and confusion going on right now. Mercury is going to square Neptune three times in an, over, the, over the next two months. May 22nd, we already had it. June 5th, we about to have it again. And July 6th, okay? I don't see Mercury, square, I don't see Mercury squaring Neptune that, uh, that quickly. I mean, that uh, close together again for the next four fucking years. The next Mercury square Neptune dates. Again, we got three in a 
three month period in a two month period so between may and june 2021 mercury is going to square neptune three different times may 22nd 2021 june 5th 2021 which is coming up saturday and july 6 2021 the next time it's going to square neptune will not be till december the next time after that will not be till motherfucking july of 2022 the next time after that will not be till december of 2022 next time will be june 2023 next time will be november 2023 next time will be december 2023 january 2024 june 2024 january 2025 june 2025 january 2026 june 2026 and december so you see they're spread out once it hits these three times it's spread out for a long period of time so that's why a lot of people been playing mind games and shit doing that astral shit too you know uh that's the dreamscape that's the astral realm too with neptune okay now let's go to the next one uh Okay, so I started at June 5th, uh, I said Venus is entering Cancer, June 10th, solar eclipse in Gemini, the only one for three years, Sun conjunct Mercury, and the new moon in Gemini all on June 10th, okay? Hold on. Sun is going to conjunct Mercury, like I said. June 11, 6 11, Mars is going to enter Leo. So, you Leos, make sure you plan to have your motherfucking nerves right. Have your nerves right. Don't be acting wild for the night. Don't be roaring at everybody, you know, clawing and shit and, 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 and all of that. Get yourself together because you better get yourself together. It's five o'clock in the morning. Where you going to be? Outside on the corner. You better get yourself together. Get yourself together, Leos. And people with Leo placements. Because Mars about to enter your sign, and I know you're going to want to go wild for the night. I know you're going to want to run with the motherfucking pride and shit. Don't do that. Restrain. Restrain. Get some chamomile tea. You know what I'm saying? Some catnip tea for bed because it help you sleep and it make your hair grow too. And, or you could actually do a catnip tea hair rinse, and it'll actually make your hair very smooth. And they say it helps with split ends and dryness. Uh, and get your valerian whatever whatever kind of calming shit you like to, to use lavender tea lavender aromatherapy make sure you get that if you know you got a lot of leo energy because mars about to enter your sign on june 11th at 9 33 peep the time 9 33 99 66 again make sure you ain't on that devil shit leo don't get in no fights around that time okay june 11th you got a couple weeks to get your shit together now that's what spirit is saying to you peep game Peep game, player. Peep game. Player, a player rep. Okay, I keep losing my place on this chart here. Okay, Mars into Leo, June 11, 2021, 9.33 a.m. again, Eastern Standard Time. Venus is squaring Chiron. Okay, might be one that you might be impressing upon yourself or others might be trying to heal some relationships or the home life uh family relationships even around or either mother daughter child you know son father son mother whatever relationships family environment relationships you know you may feel like you want to work on that around the 12th because venus is going to square chiron actually I, i'm reading this backwards venus squaring chiron uh people may be complaining about <laughs> people may be complaining about your spiritual path okay around that time uh, because I think I'm reading this backwards. I was reading it as a as a conjunction, but it's a square, which means squaring up. So Venus square Chiron, um, June 2021. Let's look in this. So it says uh, this is not a commitment friendly transit. Don't nobody want to settle down. People gonna be uh, fearful of investing themselves in a relationship around between May 30th and June 5th. So now is not the time, especially because Mercury retrograde child is Mercury square motherfucking Neptune. You know, dreams and, and people wearing masks and shit, and, and then Venus square square and Chiron. You're not gonna want to get in no shit with nobody. Be free, baby. Be free and wild and fast moving with moderation like mercury does okay be free g be free especially you leos okay don't be so free that you just running through people with that mars and leo coming up here on the 11 but just be free okay let your let your let your mane blow in the wind g okay 
Don't, don't let people lock you down right now because that's not a good time. Venus Square and Chiron, that, that means wounded people, broken people, and everybody got wounds, G, and scars. But that means especially wounded people going to want to come to you to get healing, but that shit ain't going to work. Don't start no relationships around this time now. Even even out through the middle of the... I don't, I don't suggest you start no relationships, none this summer, to be honest with you. Because the energy too motherfucking treacherous this summer, baby. You gonna watch wait till I wait till I get to where I'm going. Venus sextiles Uranus on June thirteenth. Okay, let's look at that there. This is Gaia. Of course, Uranus is Gaia. Uranus is kinda like a baby uh Saturn uh sextile Uranus June twenty twenty one. Uh thank you. Yeah. Pay attention. <laughs> yeah, Venus semi square Uranus between Venus is also semi square and Uranus uh between around May thirty or thirty one. So people might people gonna be iffy and have cold feet about relationships and commitment. It's also a bad time to commit to stuff anyway because of the Mercury retrograde again. Okay. Now, we got a last quarter moon on June 2nd at 324. That's 36, uh, 63. So, let me go to Venus sextile Uranus, and then I'll come back, okay, and talk about this last quarter moon, because that's, you know, it's got some good energy that we need to know about, too. Um, where is it? Venus square? I thought I saw it. Venus sextile Uranus, y'all. <sighs> I'm a student, so, you know, I be all over the place with this stuff. I'll come back to this page because I, I, you know how they show you little snippets in the search results? It's not taking me, it's not giving me, this is, no, this is not what I'm looking for. Venus is not conjuncting with Uranus, it is square, sextiling with Uranus. What it is, okay. Hold on. Let me find this. Okay, I found this. So again, this is from Astrology King. Um, I haven't gotten to the point where I write astrology blogs, but I'm just saying, I'm not an astrologer, but I'm, I'm learning. I'll get there. But anyway, so Venus sextile Uranus, June 13th. It says, uh, Venus sextile Uranus has a positive influence on the social life, love life, and the artistic or creative style. You may be more open-minded and progressive in your view of your own self-worth, which should make you comfortable among others in a social situation. People may notice that your lifestyle or your appearance is somewhat unusual or unconventional, and you are aware that they do. Uh, there could be a few hang-ups or barriers, and people may be attracted to you. You should try to still enjoy some social popularity. Finding a lover could come easy. Um, as is making friends because there's always something interesting or exciting about you to spark their interest. Okay, but again, they're saying no relationships during this time. Now, this uh, transit, of Venus sextile Uranus transit, um, June 13th, 2021, uh, will probably stimulate your need for fun and excitement in the social and love life. This may also be a good time for finances with the possibility of an unexpected windfall of money. If you're all alone during this transit, entertainment or creativity can satisfy your increased desire for something new and shiny in your life. You might be able to make some original or unique breakthroughs in artistic and creative work. So you might be inventing something or come up with something brand new during this time because that's the energy of Uranus and the creative aspect is Venus. Uranus is just like taboo and it's out there. You know, it's very, um, it's very, very open-minded. So it says that this, uh, again, um, may be a great time to make new friends or connect with lovers but this would be a quick fling and not committed like i said before with the other trends it's not a good time to start a relationship these are people who will not like being owned or smothered okay um this would be people who are vibing with this venus sextile uranus energy are like i'm not looking for nothing serious i just want to have fun that's you know girls just want to have fun uh, you know that's the kind of energy it is okay so i also want to cover this okay Hold on, let me make sure I got this shit right. 
Venus Queen comes to Saturn at G on June 13, 414. Saturn is going to square up with Uranus June 14th at 6 o'clock, 6 p.m. Saturn square Uranus, okay, June 14th, 2021. This is, a, this is a good one here to pay attention to. This major planetary aspect occurs only once every 22 years, baby. Saturn squaring Uranus is a major planetary aspect that occurs every 22 years, okay? Saturn square Uranus 2021 is exactly on February 14th, June 14th, and December 24th, 556 five, energy. 10, yeah, 10 and 6, which is a 7. But it says Saturn square Uranus creates a tremendous amount of inner tension. The tension could give a person an endless supply of creative and spontaneous energy that may make you very productive, but also controversial. You could be strongly independent, very self-aware, and very progressive, but you also may have a very strong sense of responsibility and appreciation of the stability that structure and tradition give, okay? And that's from that Saturn. This inner conflict between independence and responsibility or structure could be the source of inner tension, but it's also created, it can result in creative brilliance. So these transits coming up mid-June will, will probably have a lot of creative benefit for those of you all that are um, really looking to tap into that. So trying to be responsible and loyal while also being free to be yourself may be a constant battle. It may mean you might experience sudden relationship breakups or career changes. There could, become, there could come some disagreements about your level of commitment in relationships. This could lead to sudden outbreak, outbursts of temper or even sudden breakups and say, I just want to be done with it and I want to be free. You may also experience some conflict with superiors at work or even authorities in general. Um, it could also be likely that you may have difficulty obeying rules that you feel might limit your freedom, creativity, and self-expression. You could start to have a very polarizing effect on others during this transit, which may give rise to a lot of supporters uh, as well as detractors. Your respect for tradition and the state may only go so far because of your strong belief in personal freedoms during this time. Uh, you may become an activist or a campaigner for human rights or may pay more attention to that uh, human rights, humanitarian aspect or the environmental okay, activism. However, it's unlikely that many would be feeling in real anarchist energy. They're probably going to uh, prefer to change things from the inside during this transit, okay? Now, this is for the natal Saturn square Uranus people, how they feel. Now, when it comes to this transit, it says it brings restrictive change or unexpected restrictions, okay? It can bring changes that you do not want. It also can make it very hard to make the kind of changes that you do want. This could be a very frustrating time of rising tension and very sudden un sudden uh, changes. It doesn't have to be like that. If you stay open-minded, patient, and flexible, what at first seemed like challenges can be turned into opportunities in order to rid yourself of negative, restrictive, and limiting things in your life. It is best not to force any changes that you want, but just adapt to the changing conditions. Ride the waves, in other words. Wait to see what areas of life start causing problems and then deal with them. This transit can make it obvious what areas of your life are no longer working in your best interest. Your intuition and higher self-awareness may not be working so well. So just take more notice of simple practical things uh, if your intuition doesn't feel as, you know, um, keen. And then start uh, work with those things that are already making you tense and anxious. Don't, you know, if your in intuition is not feeling as sharp. And just look at the practical things that you that are tangible. This is not the time to resist change, nor is it time to overreact. Be considerate, methodical, patient, and take a step-by-step -step approach. Okay, commitment and responsibility may be issues that cause stress in relationships or your career. You may come to realize that bad habits or outdated beliefs are blocking your progress. Okay, this could be a challenging time if you rely on creative breakthroughs or intuitive insights for your work. If you lack inspiration or face a creative block, you may need to take a new approach to your work or try a new technique or a change of scene. Also, your personal freedoms and rights may be suddenly restricted. If your duties and responsibilities become too oppressive, it's better to make adjustments now before they crystallize as new structures in your life. You know, Saturn is a big, a big one, okay? 
So if you know you're the type of person to get blocks in your creativity every couple of months, you might want to go ahead and think some stuff up now before this Saturn square Uranus gets here on June 14th because it's going to block some people creatively and you know people will be beating themselves up over it and they don't realize that it was it's the transit so mars is gonna um quincunx jupiter on the 14th sun is quincunx pluto okay Now, I'm going to skip over that. I just wanted you to hear about that, okay? Again, the 14th, Saturn Square and Uranus, which I just read, could have some problems with creative blocks. Again, June 14th, Mars quincunx Jupiter. June 17th, Sun quincunx Pluto. On June 20th, Jupiter is going retrograde. That's the third law. Of, that's the third Lord of Karma. I said the Lords of Karma were coming. You, we already got Pluto retrograde. We got Saturn retrograde. Both of those will be going direct in October. And we have Jupiter going retrograde June twentieth. Jupiter is going to be retrograde from June twentieth, twenty twenty one, to October seventeenth, twenty twenty one. All of these planets, which are Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter, will go direct all in October. That's why I said before the end of the year, you're going to see a lot of people get their fucking issue. Okay. Now, what's going to happen when Jupiter goes retrograde? It will have a lot of people dazed and confused. So it says Jupiter will begin its journey backwards through the cosmos when it stations retrograde on June 20th. That's at two degrees, two degrees, 11 of Pisces, 1111. The energy of this retrograde carries on for about four months until the station's direct and we catch a break on October 17th at 2220 of Aquarius. Jupiter is one of the most beloved planets in astrology, acting as a beacon of light while spreading optimism, luck, and joy across the cosmos. This planet also represents abundance, travel, and philosophy. So what happens when the planet that loves to move forward and expand encounters a retrograde? Hey... Some people that were getting ahead are going to start to go backwards. That's what's going to happen. In 2021, Jupiter will travel through two signs while in retrograde. It began in Pisces and ended in Aquarius. At the very beginning of the retrograde, the Pisces energy could have left people in a daze with that Neptune aspect and perhaps overly optimistic about opportunities, which is the dreamy aspect of daydreaming Pisces, or overly optimistic about people that aren't exactly as we thought they were or perceived them to be. Once Jupiter backs into Aquarius, we will begin to gain more information, but it might not always be what we'd hoped for. So this is like uncovering. We may also see a spike in political disagreements and at the same time may feel drawn to a specific cause while unsure of how to even create real change in the cause. Okay. There are some dates during this retrograde that will cause Jupiter's energy to feel more present. On June 23rd, Jupiter will form a supportive aspect to the Cancer Sun, allowing us to feel optimistic, nurtured. I'm going to even say for some people, more feminine and secure. July 12th will allow us to talk about our emotions more constructively as Mercury and Jupiter connect through a harmonious trine. On July 22nd, go easy when it comes to romance as an opposition to venus could tempt us to nag our partners or point out their flaws excessively a few days after july 22nd an opposition to mars forms on july 29th so try not to overexert yourself now this is going into august and stuff i'm not going that far yet okay i want to bring it back to jupiter retrograde okay Six twenty. That's an eight. So you got Pluto retrograde, Saturn retrograde, and Jupiter retrograde on a day that has eight numerology. Okay, eight and but also so eight representing Saturn with the day in the um month with the six and then the twenty, but also the year is five. 
so that eight and five is 13 rebellion energy as well all right so Jupiter will be retrograde in Aquarius on June 20th, okay? Now, let's look at the result of this. Jupiter represents the balance of subjects related to karma, religion, philosophy, knowledge, and the offspring of past lives. It is concerned with teaching, learning, and spread of knowledge. So is Saturn. So I said the Lord is a karma. Diabetes may even be directly related to Jupiter in the horoscope. According to Hindu astrology, worshipping the guru, also Jupiter, can relieve diseases affecting the stomach and can even mitigate sins. A retrograde Jupiter is not uh, a retrograded Jupiter is not considered favorable for betting, investing, or gambling, as you are less likely to win during this period when it's retrograde. During this time, we face many challenges in doing the tasks we want to do. The challenge may develop uh, in the path of growth and development, which makes our coming time afterwards better. Okay. Now, it goes into each sign, which I'm not going to get into each individual sign because it takes up too much time. You can just look up Jupiter retrograde. Um, Jupiter rules Sagittarius and Pisces, okay? So, of course, there's always a shadow period before that starts a few weeks before and a few weeks after these dates. So, we're technically, you could already, there could already be, I'm going to say there is already some Jupiter retrograde energy coming in, okay? Um, Jupiter is connected to male yang energy, and when it's retrograde, you may become more inward focused or may want to go into hermit mode. It's as if this expansive and dynamic energy just contracts and shrinks in. So many people are affected to some extent. But if you have Sagittarius, Pisces, or Aquarius in your chart, you will be very strongly affected by this retrograde. And this period can bring up lots of emotions and ideas. So, you know, I got Sagittarius in my chart five times uh, in the West. And you see, I don't know how many times in, in the Vedic, but... And I do resonate with Pisces, even though I can't see it anywhere in my Western chart. And Aquarius is my moon, so that's very strong energy. But even though Jupiter is normally a benefic or benevolent planet, when it's retrograding, if expansion and growth go reverse in some areas of life, okay? But this can result in, you know, the universe giving you time to take control or overcome addictions, bad habits, etc., and bad behaviors that no longer serve your uh, highest good so it's a good time to work on those things when it's retrograde so that that stuff is not expanding it's actually something you can help get rid of so some people may even find that they can lose weight if that's what they're looking to do more easily during jupiter retrograde um you may feel like a contraction or restriction um the pursuit of ambitions and goals and opportunity might be little might be hindered your creativity may seem stuck or decreased in some way, and technology may also have issues. However, a positive possibility is the elimination of hindrances that once stood in the way of success. So, of course, there's a mixed bag, good and bad, depending on uh, what, you know, you resonate with. Now, the most that will be affected by Jupiter retrograde will be large animals, including agricultural animals such as cattle. Uh, they, I'm, it's not written here, but I'm going to say they may become very stubborn and ornery, not want to work or do what, you know, they, they may have become very problematic, uh, even get health, uh, have health issues or sickness for those people that work with cattle, um, or horses. People who speculate such as stock traders and gamblers will be affected by Jupiter retrograde. Those involved in organized religions like members of the clergy, lay staff and congregations, and people involved in travel. Of course, like I said, the zodiac signs most impacted are Sagittarius, Pisces, and Aquarius. Now moving forward, Sun is going to enter Cancer also on 620. On 621, Venus is going to trine with Neptune, okay? 622, Mercury is going direct, 622, okay? Let me make sure that's right, because that don't sound right. Because somebody was just saying Mercury went in retrograde on the 31st, and I'm like, Mercury goes, Mercury didn't go in a retrograde on, um, on the 31st. It's been in retrograde. 
Yeah. Mercury goes direct on June 22nd. It went retrograde on the 29th, not on the 31st, but I guess it depends on where you are in the world. Mercury will station retrograde in Gemini on May 29th during an extremely volatile astrological period. So this is tied to all that spiritual stuff that's going on too, okay? Um, now, when it comes to uh, Venus trying Neptune on the 21st, Okay, so this helps it be a good time for romance, uh, romance vacations, relaxation, and daydreaming. Okay, this may be a great time for you to watch movies, entertain visitors, visit friends or, or loved ones who may not be feeling the best, or even beautify your home and surroundings. Anything that doesn't need a high degree of physical work is a good time during um around the uh 21st when venus will be trining neptune focus on the home and you know creative stuff stuff that's beautiful relaxing entertaining or, or funny you know you might want to you might feel like you want to share more things through your compassion empathy heart heart center with that venus energy okay uh maybe even uh for those of you that are into creative arts and painting you may uh, feel like you have more fantasy energy coming through your paintings your writings or your crafts and that's not written here I'm just telling you what I'm channeling about that transit okay so of course when mercury stations direct of course there's a little bit of post shadow period but we're going to jump down to June 23rd where the sun is going to try in Jupiter okay sun try in Jupiter June 23rd so when this comes around it says this is probably the best uh, of all the solar transits you might even start feeling on top of the world feeling very warm and friendly and sociable you probably be in high spirits enthusiastic have a big boost in your self-confidence especially because when it's the sun trying jupiter the 23rd guess what it's going into leo season and leo is confidence leo is pleasure leo is feeling good in the neighborhood leo is just you know that energy so sun trying jupiter that should give a lot of people a very big boost in their confidence and also in their feel good aspect the good fortune um use those high spirits enthusiasm and that boost to make the best of the good fortune that is associated with sun trine jupiter on june 23rd is when this transit begins there might be a tendency to sit back and chill but don't just make sure if you want to sit back and chill with that sun trine jupiter transit and it going into leo because we know lions like to lounge around sometimes a lot of times actually they spend a lot of time napping uh don't just make sure you don't miss out on good opportunities uh for growth okay there could be some opportunities that come in with sun trine jupiter on june 23rd 2021 in the form of personal spiritual or material growth financial gains are possible uh, that could increase your overall net worth and your level of satisfaction and contentment if you in the if it's in the personal and spiritual growth area that could come through studying travel or anything that broadens your outlook on life learning new things or you could uh, i'm going to add in here that wasn't written uh you could get extra ideas on how to make money yeah because the expander and jupiter is guru the teacher too even though saturn's a teacher too so then we got on the 23rd we got uh venus uh venus opposing pluto Venus opposite Pluto, uh, June 23rd, 2021. This is going to bring some, um, I don't want to use that. Never mind. By the way, we're in a waning gibbous moon. Like I said, the next new moon, um, the next new moon is going to be, because we had the full moon on the 26th, 
a next new moon or was it the 24th which we just had an we just had a full moon and a lunar eclipse in sagittarius the next new moon is june 10th so it's the moon is getting smaller right now so now is a good time to be banishing shit that you don't want okay venus opposite pluto june 23rd 2021 okay this transit can add intense pressure to your closest relationships out of nowhere you or your partner if you have a partner may feel extremely suspicious jealous possession possessive or threatened or they may fall into a depression i'm gonna add because pluto is about the underside in the dark world and their subconscious may creep up on them and expose some things uh that is related to dark side traits dark triad traits dark psychology that you may not have seen before okay especially power plays in the home okay you may even deal with some relationship drama if you're in a relationship when it comes to manipulation because that's scorpio pluto energy obsessions compulsive attractions again dark side dark triad traits subconscious shit subconscious addictions could even lead to dangerous and taboo love affairs or interactions uh, if a person is single, you need to be very careful not to be taken advantage of if you decide to date or if you are dating because there are dark forces acting at the subconscious level. Thank you, spirit. I didn't even read that and I was channeling it. I told y'all I channel stuff from other dimensions and planets and systems. Okay, so you could easily fall in love with someone instantly that somebody could and this person could end up mistreating you, using and abusing you. They could even have underlying violent criminal uh, tendencies or be addicted to, to hard drugs. It's also possible that with this Venus opposite Pluto, increased powers of attraction with Venus and that obsession nature of Pluto could go to your head and make your ego get out of whack. Exerting your power over a weaker person to fulfill your desires, uh, of course, will not help with the evolution of the soul. So just use care. Any power imbalances in your love relationships will be highlighted. Venus opposite Pluto transit on the 23rd, okay? Any overpowering feelings that come out or any subconscious things that creep up that you feel need to be dealt with is to work out where they come from and be very open, okay? And address these issues. Don't, don't, don't resort to, uh, and I'm going to add this as my own words, don't resort to subterfuge and subversion and, and, and mind games and manipulation and covert tactics be open with this shit because you know that's that pluto energy pluto will want you to be sneaky about it and play mind games but you want to do the opposite of what the malefic is telling you okay <laughs> okay you want to do the opposite of what the malefic is telling you to do especially in this case so then we have on the 24th saturn sextile chiron okay now again the 24th i also said what about the 666 energy in the beginning the 24th is a full moon in sagittarius a full moon in uh, uh ninth house or excuse me well the sagittarius is about spirituality and also teaching so we got a full moon in sagittarius the transit will be at 12 49 a.m eastern standard time but it's going to rise 12 49 eastern standard time full moon in sagittarius on june 24th it's going to rise at 7 47 p.m eastern and set at 5 48 a.m eastern now it's also combined this full moon in sagittarius is combined with saturn sextiling with chiron which chiron and sagittarius are related that's the wounded healer okay the sagittarian centaur you have to read the myth on sagittarius and the centaur okay saturn Six styles, Chiron, June 24, 2020. This may help one feel competent, uh, effective, and secure. Uh, this is a lot, it's going to combine, and you know, so we got several. Uh, sex styles with Chiron so I talked about Venus squaring Chiron then we had um, so now we have Saturn sex style Chiron but there's some other stuff with Saturn Saturn excuse me Saturn not Saturn <laughs> Saturn and Chiron okay so what I want to do is 
go over this. So this year, Saturn sextiling with Chiron has happened three times, okay? So Chiron started the year off in five degree three of Aries direct. Then it goes on to Aries till it reached 12 degrees 56. Then it begins retrograde July 16, 2021. Chiron is going to continue moving backwards. And by the way, Chiron is an asteroid until December 20th when it turns direct again at 8 degrees 26. By the year end, Chiron will be at 8 degrees 30. Okay, Chiron direct means that hurts and healing experience will appear. But when it goes retrograde, these experiences will be digested and the lessons will be learned. So when we're talking about Saturn sextiling with Chiron, there's going to be some serious karma coming. When it's sextile, what does sextile mean? Let me explain this term to you. Okay, so when it's sextile, it means planetary aspects represent a 60 degree angle between two planets in the natal chart. The energy with the sextile is very cooperative. So Saturn cooperating with the wounded healer is really going to help you learn lessons. And we know Saturn is the teacher of lessons and a karmic, a karmic planet, okay? So Saturn sextiling with Chiron is going to help you learn lessons from the woundings, the battles, the things that you've been through. On the 24th when that transit begins okay it's a very a sex style is a very it's like sex you know <laughs> as what i call a sex style is a very friendly and flirty aspect between two planets or bodies that are 60 degrees apart okay it usually occurs between fire and air or earth and water okay so when we talk about um saturn sex style chiron on the 24th so the most important aspect that Chiron receives this year is the three times sextile from Saturn in Aquarius. So Saturn is in Aquarius all year, right? It happens. So Saturn sextile with Chiron on February 9th, 2021, on June 24th, 2021, which is coming up. And then it'll happen again. Saturn sextile with Chiron on November 27, 2021. Around this similar time is exactly the time period when Saturn will be squaring Uranus. Also for three times on February 18th, June 15th, and December 24th in 2021. So these are very, very similar. Saturn squaring Uranus and Saturn sextile in Chiron is very connected, okay? So, for example, as the three sextiles that Saturn makes to Chiron happen in February, June, and November which is early middle and late 2021 there will be repeated opportunities with this transit to learn the profound lesson that time is the best cure for all wounds or time heals all wounds okay because we have the master of time saturn chronos chrona okay the wheel but you know the wheel of fortune is jupiter in tarot but the world card is saturn okay if something you fought for or stood up for wasn't well received by others rest assured that your time will come eventually there's a time and place for everything and everyone the saturn and chiron sextiles this year will also show the importance of healthy boundaries spending time alone solitude social distancing and quarantine and healing okay patience and fortitude or strength would support this healing rushing into things will only make it worse so sometimes when we're hurt we want to want the pain to go away quickly but this transit will show that certain things just can't happen in the blink of an eye preparations and sticking to a plan will go a long way towards healing and remember i was talking about how another transit that i was just discussing may cause some people to feel like they have a creative block so you want to go ahead and plan for that now if you're somebody like me who produces content you might want to go ahead and start planning now to have some content and stuff to do or some creative uh, ideas to roll out in case you feel a block around that period you can go back and refer to your list and then work from your list and you're not you're not in a crunch right then of having to think under pressure and trying to compete with these planets you know for the energy that you want to pull in go ahead and plan it now okay so this is reinforcing what i said about the other transit that may cause some problems with some people's creativity so 
given the profundity uh, or the profound nature of the lesson associated with Saturn sextile and Chiron it will be good that the world will experience this three times in a single year in order to make sure the lesson sinks in sinks in so there may be something I'm gonna say this is not written here there may be something coming up from February that you have to readdress with Saturn sextile and Chiron again in June or it may be coming back around to make sure you've learned the lesson again remember we've got saturn retrograde in aquarius and saturn sextiling the wounded healer so they you know there may be something coming back up to make sure to try you to make sure you've healed from it and if you haven't then it'll come back in november it'll come back on november 27th and try you again okay all right now so Neptune is going to go retrograde on June 25th. Neptune retrograde, okay? So we've already discussed the Lords of Karma being retrograde. We're about to have another one, which is Jupiter. So Lords of Karma, Pluto retrograde, already started. Saturn retrograde, already started. Saturn retrograde in Aquarius. Jupiter retrograde, okay, is coming. Now, Neptune is going to retrograde on June 25th. So a lot of love spells, I'm telling you right now. A lot of love spells and um, mind fuckery is about to be laid bare and washed right out of the way. Not just with these solar eclipses and lunar eclipses and stuff, but uh, with these transits. They about to lay that shit out. Okay, because when Neptune goes retrograde, baby, the mask comes off and the illusion is done done. All the dreamy shit, all them games and shit, all that shit about to stop. Okay, hold on just one second y'all i'm sorry I, I you know i read so damn fast and shit i be having you know i scan these articles i'm a rapid uh reader so i scan these articles so damn fast okay so the transit of neptune retrograde here's what it means this usually uh lasts about 160 days each year during the opposition to the sun so neptune retrograde happens when neptune opposes the sun okay listen to that neptune opposite sun so darkness opposite the light as with all other planets it can cause some less concern than rarer interplanet retrogrades neptune is retrograde about 40 percent of the time compared to mars retrograde at nine percent of the time and venus retrograde only at seven percent of the time when neptune is going retrograde uh a lot of your fears can be internalized by stripping away illusions dreams and false realities that clouded your vision a destruction of your fantasy world will show harsh realities that you might have tried to avoid before you might have even kidded yourself about a love person a love situation friends finances your goals or career prospects the further from truth you have traveled or the more extreme people have tried to the more extreme measures that people have tried to employ in order to escape the truth the bigger your shock is gonna be when neptune stations retrograde so the more lies they was telling baby the more games they was playing the less they wanted to look at themselves and look in that motherfucking mirror the less they wanted to shine that light on them the less they wanted the, sh the light to be shined on them by others the harder that shit gonna hit and it's gonna be bust wide open a new relationship or a critical event may even trigger an old or past life memory of pain. This is going to combine with the day, the two day before energy of what did I, or excuse me, the day before energy of Saturn sextiling with Chiron. Remember, I said they're going to bring that lesson up to see if you healed and you learned that lesson with Saturn sextile Chiron on the 24th. And then on the 25th, Neptune is going to say, Look, baby, let me try to trigger you for an old pain. This is how the planets work. Do you see this? This is different bodies teaching the same energy. Saturn sextile Chiron, the wound to heal. Let me bring the lesson back up to see if you heal from it. Then, let me see, or let me see if you've balanced your karma, right? Then the next fucking day, Neptune goes retrograde and says, "Let me trigger you again, and and give you some more pain or past memory of pain and see how you gonna handle this." 
Neptune rules self-sacrifice, victimization, false accusations, scandals, lies, dreams, fantasies, masks, and slander, baby. I added some stuff in there. Neptune can show the source of the pain that you were trying to escape. You may even feel humiliated, betrayed, scared, anxious, or feel guilty. The internalizing influence of retrograde motion means you may spend more time worrying about yourself or your problems. Self-pity, social anxiety, or depression may cause some people to withdraw or may cause them to feel lonely or, or have loneliness. Neptune retrograde is a great time for your spiritual self-development. Again, June 25th. Self-help books or counseling may help, but other tools include meditation, yoga, tarot, astrology, swimming or exercising, and eating a more healthful diet. Okay, spending time in nature, I'm going to add in here grounding, okay, crystal healing, etc., aromatherapy, um, massage, qigong, hmm. singing bowls, etc., sound healing. So phobias, hypochondria, and paranoia may, if people are suffering with that, it may become more noticeable during Neptune retrograde, okay? Because this is about fears. But it could also become easier to discuss. The world may seem boring when conspiracy theories are debunked for, or Armageddon is postponed indefinitely. But sometimes, however, your suspicions may, in fact, be based on a realistic psychic impression. In case of health matters during this retrograde, it may be worth seeking a second opinion. Okay, remember, just say it hypochondria and fears or phobias. If you have a health concern pop up around the 25th um, with that wounded healer Chiron energy, that Saturn energy with the teacher and the leadership and all that and structure and going to the hospital and they tell you something's wrong and that Neptune station in retrograde, I'm telling you here that's not written anywhere, you may want to go ahead and get you a second, third, fourth uh, opinion so that you make sure that you don't have a misdiagnosis, okay? Or that something wasn't concealed and labeled as another thing that it's not. All right. There can be some religious persecution with Neptune retrograde, all right? So... Some people may even question your beliefs um, as to why you spiritual and not religious. What is, I mean, that's illusion. We, we know who God is. We know who God is. So watch for the zealots to come out too around, around the 25th. All right. Like I said, Venus is going to go into Leo on um, the 27th of June. Okay. On the 28th of June, Mars is going to sextile with the North Node. And Venus is going to queen cunts with Jupiter. On July 1st, Mars is going to be opposing Saturn. July 2nd, Mars is trining with Chiron. Sun queen cunts with Saturn, July 3rd. Mars is squaring Uranus, July 3rd. Mars squares Uranus. Oh, excuse me, Sun squares Chiron, July 4th. Sun sextiles with Uranus July 5th. Venus sextiles North Node July 5th. Mercury squares Neptune July 6th. Okay. So, communication. Okay. Let me look at that. July 6th. Okay. Now, you can write these terms down and Google them if you want. I just don't have the time to uh, go through all of them. Mercury squares Neptune July 6th. No, I said a square, not a trine. Why is it bringing up a trine? I said Mercury squares Neptune. So the eclipse, uh, they're saying June will be a month to look forward to and to remember. 
again the solar eclipse in Gemini will be June 10th it'll be a new moon and an annular solar eclipse okay the halo that will appear with the annular solar eclipse has a deep spiritual meaning it symbolizes resurrection or the idea that what is holy and divine the light cannot be overcome by darkness that's why a lot of shit is going to be taken out by june 10th some of these motherfuckers about to be taken out before june 1st um, why i want to go to july 6th it's not bringing it up when venus enters leo on the 27th of july this may be a very joyful romantic and creative uh time like i said earlier in the message okay it's not bringing up for me um well now it is but mercury squared neptune already so i already said that that's why it's not necessary for me to go back over it so let me skip down there's a very significant thing going on towards the end of july mercury is going to enter cancer july 11th Chiron is going to go retrograde July 15th. The wounded healer goes retrograde July 15th. Okay, Chiron retrograde is going to be um, Aries in Aries July 15th and December 19th of this year. When it goes uh, retrograde, it is going to be a period where you might want to focus on the blocks to your healing and growth and become more introspective. Okay. Sorry, I had to block a call. I can't uh, take calls while I'm recording. So let's see. Um... And I don't, I'm not going to let my recording have to start over again. July 15th, again. Chiron retrograde. There's other stuff in between there. I'm just not going over every one. I'm trying to hit the major. Sun is going to oppose. The sun is going to oppose Pluto on July 17th. This is going to cause, um, now of course during Pluto retrograde, um, this is causing some deep reflection. All right. Now, when it comes to the sun opposing Pluto transit, it's going to come on July 17th, 2021 or sun opposite Pluto. It can cause some kind of crisis either with self-esteem or relationship or some kind of event. So it could even be due to self-destructive or self-sabotaging character traits such as addictions, spying or stubbornness in relationships. If you have, you know, a relationship or whatever kind of relationships around you, you might even be the subject of or the perpetrator of manipulation, jealousy, domination or spying with the sun uh, opposite Pluto transit. Events may include the breakdown of an appliance, a car, theft, violence, or the destruction of possessions by people of a, nat a natural disaster, okay? If something like this was to happen, it's important not to be overly aggressive or assertive, egotistical, or resistant to change. So try not to be too stubborn with this sun opposing Pluto, okay? These things are out of one's control. Usually change may be forced upon you with this. Um, but this transit could be less disruptive if you are the one that starts to change to evolve your soul. Um, this aims to help you transform and live a better life. Okay. With experiences that are more satisfying. Now I'm trying to get to the, um, uh, trying to get to what's at the end of July because, um, there's something important that I saw that I want to uh, go over. Mercury squaring Chiron on July 19th. Okay, so mm, 
not really giving me much. It, this this may bring up some trust issue. The Mercury Chiron uh, conjunction can talk about trust, but it's not telling me about the Mercury Square Chiron on July 19th. So if you want, you can look that up. It is telling me, but let me see what it's saying. Yeah. I clicked on a link for Mercury Square Chiron July 19th. It's not bringing it up, okay? So you'll have to look that up if you want. I just want to mention it. Um, July 20th, Mercury sextiles Uranus. That's in 1.7 months. July 21st, Venus enters Virgo. Okay. July 22nd, Venus is going to oppose or be opposite Jupiter. Maybe some problems with money and abundance and, um, and stuff in the home and the family unit. Okay, Mars Quincunx is Pluto July 22nd as well. Sun enters Leo July 22nd. Qu Sun Quincunx is Jupiter July 23rd. Mercury trines Neptune July 24th. July 25th, Mercury opposes Pluto. Okay. Mercury enters Leo also on July 27th. So yeah, I thought it was some stuff around the 27th that was important. Mercury quincunx is Jupiter also on July 27th. July 28th, Jupiter enters Aquarius on July 28th. Remember, we're in Saturn retrograde. And Aquarius too. Jupiter's Jupiter's going into Aquarius on July 28th. That's um that's pretty relevant there. So this will be the Jupiter retrograde going into Aquarius, okay? Um, wait a minute. Let me make sure. This is going to be tying into some social activism. You may see some damn protests break out. I'm telling you, it's not written here. So, Jupiter is in Aquarius from December 19, 2020 to May 13, 2021. And then, from July 28, then it goes retrograde, as I already said. And then it goes back to Aquarius from 20... From July 28th to December 28th. Okay. So. It returns to Aquarius in retrograde motion on July 28th. Alright. Now. What does this mean? This is about social activism. Okay. Um. Jupiter has this, uh, like I said, it's a benefic or benevolent energy, and it's of the king of the gods. But it's, it leaves the sign of its fall, what it means, is what it means when it's in Aquarius. So it means leaving behind the industrious or oppressive energy of Capricorn, which is all about working, working, working. The great father, the, you know, the stern patriarch, great father of the Zodiac. So when it goes into Aquarius, it welcomes very much individualistic and freedom oriented energy of Aquarius rebel energy so this is very liberating okay now when it was in Capricorn it probably wanted us to focus on the strategy required to achieve goals and accumulation of wealth since Capricorn is about wealth so there might have been some more obsession about money but when it's in Aquarius it's more focused on the openness and the expansion of the mind the search for freedom and the real value of individual individuality social activism humanitarianism cooperation and technology get more attention as we're encouraged to think outside the box and see the world from an us instead of me perspective very progressive and socialist at heart is aquarius okay it wants you to see the bigger picture when it's in aquarius so the last one i'm going to go to the 31st and then i'm going to end this on the 29th Venus squares north node, okay? And of course, you can refer back to this as you need.
Now, when it conjuncts with the North Node, it can mean uh, diplomatic and socially ambitious. When it's squaring, that means that people might start to ignore their higher purpose, okay? Or they might try to get others to fulfill their needs and nurture them and baby them instead of doing their own journey, okay? So keep that in mind, okay? And then it can also, when, it, when Venus is squaring the North Node, this transit can also cause people to avoid opening their heart and receiving guidance and love of others the nurturing of others the care and support of others uh, so you need to be reminded that when venus squares the north node make sure that you are open to others assisting you along your higher soul purpose which is your north node your destiny okay and make sure that you're not trying to just stubbornly go it alone and just you know having tunnel vision and i don't need no help it'll it'll probably try to put people into that energy but make sure that you don't get stuck in that now when august when it gets closer to august of course i'll i'll do an astro um i'll definitely talk about it when it gets closer to august okay so that was the mat that was the main the last main one okay venus square north node yeah venus square north node was the last big one on july 29th okay mars is going to also oppose jupiter on july 29th mars is going to enter virgo on july 29th and venus quincunx is with saturn on july 30th july 31st sun sextiles north node that's friendly energy so the sun you probably get a lot of um energy and encouragement and motivation from the solar plexus aspect of the sun um when it sextiles with that friendly energy of the north node of your higher purpose so you might feel very very inspired uh to reach your destiny and connect with your higher self and your divinity leading amongst leading you on your soul path your soul your sol sun path okay your star seed path all right your neo path whichever you like to call it and then beginning on august 1 Mercury will sextile with North Node too, so you probably feel very communicative about your destiny, or you may want to find new ways of communication when it comes to your destiny, your higher soul purpose, etc. Your North Node. Mercury is a communicator. Remember, that's third house. So you may feel very, 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 very talkative, and um, hmm, how can I say this? Ready to keep moving forward uh, on your journey with that Sun sextile North Node and that Mercury sextile North Node just one day apart july 31st and august 1st okay so thank you so much for listening and bearing with me you know those were my own words i didn't read that but um i'll check back in with y'all with another astro another uh talk on the astrological components the closer it gets to august and if there's something that comes up that i forgot to mention and i see something relevant of course i will mention it in uh uploads and, and episodes that come up in between now in the future okay but let me tell you this north the north node transit um this can tie with the karmic relationship aspect okay your north node versus you being connected to a relationship that is karmic that may want to keep you from your north node or, or steer you out of your north node so be very 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 careful with that okay be very careful about karmic relationships resurfacing not just because of the mercury retrograde now but with those north node transits that are going on this summer with venus okay because there will be some karmics that are going to be trying to come back and what they will be coming back for is to keep you off of your path to keep you out of your north node to pull you out of your north node to have you focused on home stuff which is fourth house venus cancer energy because venus rules cancer and cancer is the fourth house that home aspect and relationship and marriage and children there's some people that are going to try to pull you into that out of you so that you won't be on your north node since you won't be on your destiny and these people will be karmic they will be karmic i'm telling you that okay it is this is going to be a soulmate and or friends frenemies you know so they're going to try to pull you out of that and say oh well why don't you just get married why are you doing that tarot stuff why you know why are you running your own business you don't need to be doing all that girl all you need is a husband child boo child boo 
You know, you on that feminist shit. See, people will come around. Karmic soulmates don't just have to be lovers. They can be motherfucking parents, sisters, uh, uh, colleagues, and people you know. Don't let people fool you into that. There's a lot of energy coming through this summer about karmics and lessons. Okay? And so, if you've already closed karmic cycles on people, don't let them come back. Don't just listen to these tarot readings that tell you, oh, your twin flame coming back. When you know that motherfucker was toxic and you close that karmic cycle, I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm going to tell you right now, my twin flame ain't coming back over here. I'm not reopening that cycle because I know that's, that is negative when it comes to my north node. My north node is for me. It don't have nothing to do with him. He ain't, he ain't got nothing to do with my motherfucking destiny. I'm me by myself. I'm my twin flame. Okay? Now, while we use that connotation and twin flames are real, he don't have nothing to do with me being able to manifest money. I'm doing, I can do this shit myself. Just like he did his shit himself. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do this shit myself. And that's what the most I have told me. But I'm not knocking anybody or trying to oppose anybody's views. I'm just telling you for me, I closed that karmic cycle and my life got better. The motherfucker's low vibration because he's karmic. Twin flame or not, he's low level. When he was around, my money was getting fucked up. That kind of energy don't change in four months, six months, a year, two years, three years. That kind of energy that's attached to somebody that's got a dark soul and those kind of tethers and addictions and all kind of nasty energy in their bloodline and old nasty ass packs and oaths with, with demonic spirits and all kind of low vibrational entities. That kind of shit don't change in a couple of years for a fucking twin to come back and not fuck up my vibration. No ma'am and no sir. He ain't coming back over here. Okay, and he should know that. You chose what you chose. That was your last time. A 20-year cycle. No, no, sir. You're not coming back over here. You chose what you chose. That's your karmic lesson. And I have something new coming in at some point. Meaning as far as a partner. Even if it ain't that, it'll be what I want. Because, see, I don't necessarily want a partner. I'm fine being by myself. I'm not one of these chicks that see my life is incomplete without a man. Men are a lot of fucking trouble. Okay. And a lot of the women that promote that so much, they keep, every time they get with a man, they go backwards. Every time they get with a man, they get stuck. Every time they get with a man, they get off of their path. Every time they get with a man, they end up in a lot of hell because bitches be attacking the relationship and attacking them. I'm not going through them troubles no more. Y'all bitches had a motherfucker. I don't want him. You know, I'm not saying he's a horrible person or nothing. I wouldn't say that. But I, there's no way I'm going to subject myself to that kind of spiritual attack just to be with a person and destroy my soul path. I'm not doing it. Karmic lesson was learned. As long as those people are breathing air, I would have to worry about me giving that person another chance and then repeating that shit again. And me getting under me, me getting attacked or my children getting attacked over that nigga. Fuck him. He can go and find somebody else to just stay by himself. And he's probably going to be cursed to be alone. Because that's what my guys told me years ago. I told him several years ago he was going to end up by himself. They're probably going to curse him to be alone. And they said we are. So, you know, he ain't coming back over here. He's just going to have to live with the fact that he chose wrong. And that's his lesson. My lesson is I learned who the fuck I was. I knew who I was. He didn't believe it too goddamn bad. You know how a lot of people feel when a person, uh, when they were dating a person and the person becomes very wealthy, famous, well-known, well-to-do, doing well, they kicking themselves, right? That's their karmic lesson. Ain't gonna be no maybe next time. The cycle's broken. Ain't gonna be no maybe next lifetime. Cycle's broken. Okay. I literally just saw hands tearing up a contract just now. So God is not having it. God is not having that shit. The only reason why I said is God may reconcile him is not to necessarily be with me. God may reconcile him to be back in his good graces. I don't want him. And God knows that. And I just heard message received. Okay, so, you know, people can try to encourage that all they want. You got a lot of people out here that know that's a fucking detrimental person. They've listened to your story or they've they've uh, listened to your comments or watched your comments and they or they've read you privately and you didn't know it. And they found out this person was very, very toxic and their readings reflect it. But they keep telling you this person's coming back. This person's coming back. They realize they made a mistake. I don't want him back. 
he can come back over here and see these people will encourage you with their word witchery and their spell work and their readings to try to give another person a chance get the person a chance again and they'll watch you downfall and get cheated on yeah we're gonna do our reading so that she thinks he's coming back for real but we all we all know and we know she knows he ain't shit and he gonna come back and play games or he coming back with knives behind his back but we're gonna formulate our readings so that she can be under or he can be under a spell for this person to come back and then open the door and then we're gonna sit back and laugh and watch when all their abundance goes out of the window and they end up sick sick or damn near dead or dead some of them don't trust these readers when they're telling you to go back to toxic ass twins that are a lot of, i told y'all a lot of these twins are your nemesis how many times you gonna give them a chance now i'm not telling you you shouldn't i'm just saying how many times you got to repeat the lesson that's why your life ain't moving forward that's exactly fucking why your life ain't moving forward and while people are going back down the road of uh two three five ten fifteen twenty thirty year lessons they can go back down them lessons. I ain't going down that cycle. I closed a 20-year fucking cycle, not just with him. I closed a 20-year fucking cycle of karma in my life. Another reader picked up on it. There's no fucking way I will open up a cycle that was going on since I was 17 to go back. Nobody on this planet is worth that. Not even my own children. Fuck that noise. Ain't nobody on, on this planet for me to go back through 20 years of hell again. Open that door back up. Hell fucking no. I cut all my family off. What the fuck you mean? fuck you mean a twin nigga's not a twin he's a karmic he got demoted when you lay in the bed with karmics and you let motherfuckers ride all over you and all that shit you a fucking karmic you're not a twin fuck that shit be careful with this shit now because these karmics gonna be trying y'all this summer be careful all right so anyway i'll talk to you soon um when I get a chance to, uh, I'll be going over some other topics. I'm not going to say what's next, but I'll be going over some other topics, all right? Uh, but yeah, uh, the, the Lords of Karma are coming for you, baby. Now, have you been naughty or have you been nice? Now, if you've been doing spiritual work to try to free yourself from a situation or you've had to get readings or you've uncovered some things that were causing um, you know, cycles to repeat or curses to repeat and things like that, you if you've been doing the proper work in ascension the lords of karma are going to assist you in in shutting certain doors and cleaning certain things up okay the lords of karma again being pluto saturn and jupiter they all pluto and saturn already retrograde jupiter about to go retrograde neptune gonna be going retrograde this summer too okay so the lords of karma though the three lords of karma will be all retrograde at once between now and the middle of june Plus the eclipse and the moons and all that. It's going to be um, a good time for the people that have done the work. And, you know, a time of rest, reflection, and also growth. And, you know, test of have you learned a lesson? Are you, you know, you feel, are you good? Are you, you know, have you healed with the Chiron aspect? But also, it's going to be a time of problems for the people that have been in karmic energies low vibrational energies in other words now um i wanted to touch on series i almost forgot so let me go over that right quick because series is a malefic and i could have sworn that series um was going to be doing some stuff either in june or july i think series is going to be doing something in july okay so series represents motherly love and it does say series was in taurus may 4th okay so series is in taurus between may 4th and august 1st okay now series is connected to demeter and persephone and so if you don't know the myth the mythological series is the counterpart to demeter she was the greek goddess of the harvest whose daughter Persephone was famously stolen to the underworld and kidnapped by Hades or Pluto in the origin story of the seasons. Grieved by their separation as well as the loss of her purpose as a mother, Ceres withered the crops and made everything die and subjected the countryside to famine. Okay, now when uh, Zeus learned about the people's suffering and starvation, Zeus ordered Persephone to be returned from, uh, he was like, give her back, Hades, give her back, Pluto. 
but the virtue of some last minute trickery by Haiti, she was actually obligated to spend a third of the year below ground. During this time, Ceres would mourn and the earth would become barren in accordance with winter. And then when Persephone was allowed to go back, spring would come and life would flourish and grow again. Okay, so Ceres slash Demeter and Pluto Hades share a connection with cycles of renewal, rebirth, life and death, transformation. Okay, the infinity symbol up and down, up and down, up and down. Ceres symbol is the sickle, which is just like the Grim Reaper for the Plutonian Pluto death card. Ceres domain is what grows out of the soil like food but Pluto's domain is what is buried within the soil like oil and precious metals also known as other people's money but also is buried not just what buried what is buried but within the soil is also what's beneath the soil the underworld so Ceres used to be a dwarf planet But Ceres mythology basically says what it means to lose something or someone you love and regain it in harmony with natural cycle. So again, karmic shit, Ceres, baby, all right? So in astrology, Ceres defines how we mother those we care about. A lot of y'all divine feminines are guilty of being in Ceres energy and mothering fucking twin flame divine masculines or whoever you, you know, you're with. A lot of y'all are guilty of that. This series will define how we mother those we care about or nurture and how our role must change as our relationships evolve and become more complex. We might ask ourselves what it truly means to nurture a bond. How do we respond to others, quote unquote, leaving the nest? How do we greet them if they come home? As the goddess of fertility of the land, Ceres also deals with the resources we uh, accrue or collect for our survival and how we assess our own value when we run up against feelings of lack and bereavement or grieving. Her archetype is thus deeply layered and very nuanced, and it outlines how we support as well as how we grieve death, as well as how we plant new seeds. This is reaping and sowing energy, okay? The infinity symbol, magician energy as well. Now, um, Ceres is associated with agriculture as well as with nurturing instincts and motherhood. So we can really assume a comfort level within it being in Taurus, which allows for easy expression of the Ceres energy, okay? Now, on May 8th, Ceres left Aries to go into sensual and stoic Taurus. During the next three months, from May 8th to August 4th, the primary mode of care may lie in holding space for others and creating atmospheres that are conducive to their growth. Ceres in Taurus is in tune with the rhythms and seasonal cycles of knowing when to provide a strong presence and when to just step back, be hands off, and observe. Patience will be our ultimate virtue during this time as we become increasingly aware that we should offer others shelter. Uh, excuse me, that should we offer others shelter, we give them the ultimate gift a permission to act naturally. All right, this is akin to a mother putting a roof over a child's head. Knowing this enables one to learn and make mistakes in a safe environment. One pitfall to be aware of while Ceres is going through Taurus through August 4th will deal with rejection and abandonment wounds manifesting as feelings of scarcity. What happens when we want to cultivate a bond and we are denied? How much of our worth is truly wrapped up in the act of caring for? No, a lot of y'all divine feminines only chasing these motherfuckers because you want somebody to mother. Mother and nurture yourself. How do we achieve or lose a sense of purpose if someone says that they're not cap that they are capable of taking care of themselves? Hmm? See, a lot of y'all want y'all divine masculines to level up, but a lot of y'all not ready for that because you want a mother in control. Hmm. Another topic for another day. Your relationship with money may be similar at this time. This is an ideal transit for making investments, but you better check them other transits because you don't, you don't need to be making no trans, you know, no investments during no Mercury retrograde and during some of these other conjunctions and transits. Now, here's the shadow side of Ceres and Taurus. Ceres does not react to loss well, and any suggestion or de of devaluation or forfeiture can cause us to question whether we're capable of supporting ourselves. Lack in any form may have us believing we're not good enough mothers or good enough people or caretakers, and scarcity could be punishment for your failings, whether it's relational 
or financial, we must trust that we what we lose will be returned to us as per organic cyclical progressions of the universe and nature. Instead of doubting one's worth when situations don't go according to plan, strive to trust in the process of renewal. Ceres will move through Taurus until August 1st before it enters Gemini. Oh, I was saying August 4th. I meant August 1st. But due to the retrograde cycle, it will retrograde back to Taurus on December 22nd. Themes that crop up now related to sustenance or survival, security, foundations, and st sustainability should be noted as they may reemerge to impact your personal decisions or the cultural zeitgeist at large before the end of the year. So December 22nd, December 21st, that's uh, winter solstice. All right. Now, Ceres is a malefic. Okay. Ceres is a malefic. So you might want to look into that if you're interested. Yeah, a ser it has a seriously malefic side when afflicted. Okay, she has a, a strong place in disasters. Okay, like 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 it said, when Persephone wasn't given back, she killed everything. So, Ceres is the largest of the asteroids. Okay, now. She, when a lot of disasters happen, she uh, can be found right up in there, okay? If they look at the chart when a disaster happens, a natural disaster or some other disaster, usually Ceres can be right up in there. Now, modern astrology, the traditional malefic planets were Saturn and Mars. The greater malefic was Saturn and the lesser malefic was Mars, okay? Now, modern astrology considers Pluto, Uranus, and Ceres to be the malefics. But none of those were known to ancient astrologers. Mercury is a flip-flopper. It changes from malefic to benefit, excuse me, malefic to benefic, depending on what it is, or bad to good, depending on what's uh, going on. All right. Now, Ceres is a nurturer. That's where the word cereal comes from. All right. Because she does have to do with staple food, white rice, wheat, corn, potatoes, etc. Now, Ceres is also connected to uh, the, the stock market, stocks, stocks, cattle, you know, um, so just make sure that you don't have karmics coming back so that you will nurture them and then they plan on getting you in that nurturing energy and then they'll do something to shock you, okay, and then you destroy everything, that's series energy. They want to come in and get your love, and then they do something, in, usually intentionally, uh, against the mother figure, because people with childhood wounds uh, have a problem with mothers, usually. Now, people can have a problem with fathers, but a lot of the people, especially men that have childhood wounds, have a problem with their mother. So, a lot of times, they'll come back, get you in that energy again of caring and, and showing, and then they actually start to resent you, and then what do you do? You tear the whole motherfucker down. So just make sure you, you peep game on this kind of stuff, all right? Peep game on the uh, intentions of karmics that might be trying to push back up this year. I already know what my decision is. I would never let somebody come back to me that embarrassed me before the fucking world. There's no fucking way. You can kiss my ass from now till kingdom come. And uh, so, so can his stupid ass karmic. Every reading that I, every time I turn around, the reading is talking about the motherfuckers jealous and want to fuck up my life and you know his bitch doing magic I'm, there's no way i invite that trash back in my life hell no hell fucking no and anybody who does keep repeating them cycles you need to look twice at why you keep going back to stuff like that what what is the unfinished business i mean have they not shot you enough times do you you want to give them another clip you want to give them another magazine full of more rounds to shoot you a couple more times you want to give their fucking karmics that they keep on the side on rotation some magazines and some ammo to shoot you with is that what you want to do if you don't want to do it stay out of the motherfucking line of fire keep them motherfuckers out of your goddamn territory and they won't be able to shoot at you like that okay they might be able to send negative energy but the closer you allow them to get to you the more likely they are to make their mark and on that note 
I'm gone. Talk to you later.